Hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, Rogue Trader with the adventures of Wilbur and his crew, which is, you know, I'll be honest, uh, we're kind of on the talking to people arc of things because this has taken a while and we've only gotten like maybe like one and a half people done like honestly not even probably because we got to talk to pascal again we went through pascal's stuff uh but then we got our uh quest from jay here then for some reason i just decided to take a bath for like half an hour <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, just hang out with the boys and bring our Genta in to have a little workout sesh. And it was very awkward and weird. And I loved the hell out of it. I loved every second of it. But right now we're going to be getting back to Jay here to talk to her more and kind of finish off her thing. Like her whole get caught up with everything she has to say. And then we have, oh, oh, he's back. Okay, I guess he just jumped, so we're not going to talk to him, Pascal, anymore. I don't know why he jumped back here now that we've reloaded in, but... Okay, I can... I, I guess I can count that as a full full character done there, so... May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored without our little talk, Sherin? Okay, get off my shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um... You don't like a, look like a typical smuggler. No truer words have ever been said. I'm far more exciting than some small-time peddlers from Footfall. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Jai Amira Fatqain Tamiri Ash Ifrit, the twelfth daughter of the Lord of Ifrit, a distant world at the fringes of the Imperium. Okay. Never gonna be saying that for sure. Never coming out of my mouth. Uh, but the Ifrit part is, is funny. You know, that's very Final Fantasy. Uh, very funny. The youngest child is destined to become a bargaining chip in the family's political games. But I was unwilling to accept such a fate and wanted to choose what to become and which path to follow. When I learned the Exalted One watches over hundreds of other worlds amidst distant stars, I understood there was an entire world of opportunities beyond Ifrit. All I had to do was break the familial bonds tying me down and escape the planet, which I did a long time ago. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold up. Okay, I thought your name, your last name was Ifrit, but you're saying the planet's name is Ifrit? But also, oh, hold on, I can just scroll up and look. Hold on. Okay, yeah, no. The planet is called Ifrit, and her last name is Ifrit. She's named after the planet. So she is like a fucking... She's a noble who just decided to go off and be a criminal, kind of, maybe? Well, let's be real. Most nobles are just, you know, criminals on, under underneath the public guys, you know, right under our noses. But she just does it out in the open, which is cool, which is respectable, I guess. But... Uh, why did you choose to the, come to the Coronas Expanse? The Coronas Expanse. A gorgeous name, isn't it? I like it. But this backwater wasn't my original destination when I escaped, Sherin. Oh no, it was the rumors of incredible freedom that brought me to the Coronas Expanse. Freedom that is generously bestowed upon everyone who can survive in these parts. All doors are open here. You can become a saint, a mogul, a kingmaker, or anyone you like, really. Here, hard work pays off. Unless you're used to lying by the roadside and complaining instead of toiling for the good of your soul, glory, wallet, or whatever floats your boat. I'm used to working hard, and so I found my blessing. So the Coronas Expanse is just what... The American Dream? <laughs> Pretty much? I mean, that's what that's what people think, you know? Okay. How did you escape Ifrit? I convinced my father. I personally wished to oversee the inspection of imported goods. I had to get experience so I wouldn't bring shame on our family, didn't I? I made friends with traders, missionaries, and soldiers at the port. I listened to their stories, studied the charts, learned what documents I had to forge to escape the planet. A kind word here, a shiny coin there, 
And here I am, in the iron belly of a ship, braving the void in search of a new life. Huh. I wonder if they're, like, looking for her or something, you know? Like, what age did she escape? Did she say that? I don't think she did. Youngest child, blah, 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 no. No, I don't think she did. Interesting. But yeah, if she went on, you know, search for a new life, but maybe they'll, they're will they looking for her. Maybe we'll run into some of that. I don't know. Judging by your implants, you've had quite a few close shaves over the years. Consider it a mark of my trade. This year, Xenos, dumb-headed orcs. Who knew that we weren't the only ones to get tempted by the wreck of that raider? As for this treasure, I received it as a reward for a life that had been just a little too good. I was in a hurry to get to the Adeptus Amasakis after the Exalted One blessed me with immense wealth. I was two back streets away from the den when a pathetic Ashmag attacked me, envious of somebody else's fortune. Okay, so she got mugged. <laughs> she got mugged and they slit her throat, but she survived. Fucking rad. Tech use test succeeded. You're familiar with the implants like the one that has replaced Jay's neck. It is merely one part of a massive augmentation replacing the internal organs. A slit throat could not have been the cause for installing such a sophisticated device. Interesting. So either she's lying or she's omitting, I would say. Thank you for sharing. All relationships are based on mutual trust. That goes for business too. Okay. Get off my ship. I just can't. <laughs> every time. Uh, tell me about your background again. The youngest yeah, child. No, thank you for saying. Oh, shit. I didn't even hit that. My trade means knowing the right people and non people. Having the right connections and making sure the precious goods find their way into the hands of my no less precious customers. My wisdom includes the knowledge of the enemies of humankind. Be they Xenos or the lowest scum in the Imperium, as well as the latest knowledge about how much they charge for any particular curio at the footfall market. Not even the most cunning Aji will deceive you as long as I am with you, Sherin. I promise you that. Whatever I have can be yours too, if your unfathomable wealth isn't enough for you already, I mean. Okay, what did I... Tell me about your business in the Kronos Expanse. Okay, so that's just saying that. So she's going to make sure I don't buy any $3 million fake Pokemon cards, which is cool. I like that a lot. Uh, do you do do you do business with the enemies of humanity? She said she does. You know, with the Xenos. I don't know what that entails, though. It has been known to happen. After years of dealing with Xenos, I've learned their customs, and even got a grasp of their language. Except they cringe whenever I start speaking, arrogant sods. They dislike even our voices, but they never turn away our valuables. Then again, I'm used to seeing sour faces. In this trade, the easily offended go out of business. Ah, true. Very good. Some thick skin, especially around her neck. Uh, perhaps your knowledge, uh, will serve the Von Valencius Protectorate. Uh, if you s uh, say what you want, but consorting with Xenos is a betrayal of the Imperium. The things we do for profit and gain, right? Uh, no, your knowledge will serve my Protectorate. Thank you. I have no doubt you will have to deal with Xenos sooner or later. When that time comes, Sherin, you will thank the Exalted One for sending me to stand at your side. Okay, is she actually like... I don't know if I can hit it here. No, I can't. Uh, but I wonder if she actually has like really high like Xenotech kind of shit. You have many talents. Are you really that rich? <laughs> Dude, coming from me? Are you serious right now? She's nothing compared to the planets I own. Anyway. Uh, you could be sitting back reaping the fruits of your work, your own work, so why have you chosen to embrace that word of life aboard a void ship? The vis vicissitudes? I don't even know. Tell me more about Xenos of the Corona Expanse. Let's talk about something else. You have many talents. 
Thank you, Shereen. Being able to read and write is chief among them. You may not be aware, but this science is beyond the abilities of billions of the Imperium subjects. And yet they happily keep drudging along in their factories, fundi, and assembly lines. Me? I didn't escape Ifrit to consign myself to such misery. It was literacy that paved my path to copied orders, forged signatures, counterfeited papers. The wonderful things that make the wheels of bureaucracy turn in the right direction. That's very sad. <laughs> but yeah, I can read and write, and that's why I got to uh, where I am today. <laughs> very cool. Very fun. Uh, are you really that rich? Compared to the rabble on footfall, perhaps. Compared to you. Be it power or money, I still have a long way to go. I could purchase one of Footfall's asteroids, but not a planet. I could subjugate a few gangs from the shady districts, but not Vladayam. And so the answer to your question is no. I do not consider myself rich. I am not rich enough. Very uh, aspirational. Also, his name is Vladayam? I'll probably never remember that. I'll just say Vladayam again. But damn, you know, anyway, uh, you can be sitting back reaping the fruits of your own work. So why choose to uh, be on my ship? You're fun to talk. Yeah, fair. I grew tired of scribing endless contracts and agreements neatly tucked away on footfall. Well, I did that for uh, how many years? But here among the stars, you are always balanced on a knife edge. Nothing thrills me more than the tension of a warp jump or the danger that lurks around every corner on a planet. Footfall was beginning to make me fat and stupid, Sherin. I do not want that. Bitch, you talking to me about being fat? Are you for real right now? Anyway, uh, yeah, she's a she's a thrill seeker. That's fair. I am counting on life in your retinue being more exciting than sitting behind a desk in my office. Yeah, very, um, you know, not a, not a noble goal for sure, but also, is that, oh, I didn't know I could hover over that and see a cool picture. That's cool. I just thought it looked like the, the Yu-Gi-Oh eye, the Millennium Puzzle, or, or Pegasus's eye, or whatever. Anyway, what are the gangs, uh... What about your gang that stayed back on Footfall? Do you trust them? Do I trust the Trickster Twins? By the Exalted One, no. The underhanded rogues of Footfall came up with that name for a reason. The tricks of those frenzied Ashmags are all about things far more intriguing than the honest and law-abiding subjects of the Imperium can imagine. The mention of her fellow cold traders makes Jay's eyes shine a bit brighter than usual. Interesting. On the other hand, this is why I am keeping them close. Kor and Tora know who lifted them out of the cesspit proudly called the Shadow Quarters, and who has been feeding that ravenous beast their insatiable lust for lucre. No, they are not going to betray me if only because they know I am now a part of your entourage, Sherin. They are not going to let the biggest pie in the Imperium pass them by without trying to get a slice for themselves. Definitely, uh... Definitely apt. Let's talk about the Xenos. Vicious, cruel, dangerous beasts. Humans hold little interest for Xenos. We are entertainment for them, a means to keep boredom at bay, a commodity. But some of them contact us once in a while using their own people. Do not deceive yourself by thinking you are safe because there are no Xenos in sight. Those Aji are as cunning as they are ruthless. They cleverly pull at the strings of spies and traitors, subjugate those who do not fall for the promised reward, transform the ones who resist their promises into soulless puppets. The Emperor watches over me, and that is why I still haven't succumbed to the fate of many of my associates who have lost their lives to the stringy scoundrels. I love the way she says some words, dude. The Emperor. <laughs> that was very... Very sexy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's talk about something else. I think we've said all there is to say on this topic. I believe so too. 
Uh, I've seen enough of the shiny wrapping of the Coronix Expanse. Tell me about its dark side. Ooh. The dark side is the real Coronix Expanse, if you ask me. But what do you want to know about it, Shireen? Okay, and uh, now she's my connection to the seedy underbelly underworld of the Coronis Expanse. How do they do things on footfall? Dennis the heirs drink with criminals. Rock traders strike deals with the Caspalica, and dozens of ships stop off for a welcome break from a long voyage. Is there a more beautiful place in the entire Imperium? The Emperor is merciful to the meek and the powerful alike. There's a job for everyone as long as they have a head on their shoulders. And if you feel like talking to him in person, the statue of the Exalted One can be seen from any asteroid. You can pray to your heart's content. Okay, that didn't really uh, enlighten anything. I thought there was going to be more detail in that. Uh, tell me about the Casabalica mission. An ancient crime cartel that originated with the first settlers of the Calixis sector. It is run by shadowy clans with robber barons at the helm. Cross their path and you risk making enemies all over the Caronis expanse, or even the entire Imperium. As for the agents, they are just shameless, greedy scum. Okay, I didn't actually uh, know that, that the, uh, those, that faction was also criminals. I thought they were all stand up except for the uh, the pirates or whatever. Every third person on Footfall is a Caspalican. But that doesn't mean all that rotten filth is acting together. I've been set up more than once just so some Caspalican can get one over on his rivals. And yet, the Caspalica is generous to its customers, if you can afford it. Anything can be obtained, organized, and transported for the right price. The customer is always right, unless they happen to be a rat. In which case, huh. Okay, so maybe they are like a semi-stand-up faction. Like maybe they're like kind of Yakuza-esque where they're like, yeah, they have legitimate businesses, but they're also, you know, criminals at night, you know? <laughs> Persuasion test succeeded. Excellent. Always do, hopefully. Yes, 115. Okay, at 145% uh, success rate. Scum, rotten filth, rats. It's almost as if Jay's mask briefly sl slipped and she started using words that have no place in the vocabulary of someone from the upper strata of the Imperium. Yeah, she does seem very down to, uh, down to get dirty, you know? Are one of the Casabellicans robber barons? Are you one of the Casabellicans robber barons? What gave you such an outrageous idea? Was it my immaculate garment? My gorgeous jewelry? Do not worry, Shireen. I will let you know once I become a Baroness, should the Exalted One will it. Just imagine the strong and fruitful alliance that could be forged between a rogue trader and a mastermind of the Kasbalika. Cool. So how did you become a Kasbalikan agent? It's not hard to do on footfall. I spent a year working for good old Christo. He was a brave soldier who gave up the ghost in a scuffle with orcs, and then took over his business. Having a good head on your shoulders and keeping the Exalted One in your heart helps to establish new contacts quickly. Eventually, I gathered together a group of honest and loyal people, and it only took a few successful contracts for the Caspalica to take notice. I quickly settled on footfall and started dispensing my wisdom to my protégés and subordinates. I lost the taste for getting my hands dirty. You know, just the way they talk about the Emperor is very funny to me because that's like comparing like saying, yeah, I was a I was a drug dealer and, you know, I was really, you know, low level drug dealer. But, you know, I kept Jesus Christ in my heart and I was able to take over the drug empire. <laughs> Which is just hilarious to me. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's very funny. And I love it. Uh, okay, uh, tell me about the cold trade. It really is simple, Shireen. 
The Kasbalika runs the Imperium's black market, offering special goods to those who can afford their services. Yes, I am talking about Xeno artifacts too. Alien weapons, technology, sometimes even certain kinds of living creatures. Ooh. Party members? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Imagine. Unlike the rogue traders whose sacred warrants make them immune even from the laws of the Exalted One, Kasbalikan agents are used to hiding and covering their tracks. Nobody wants to draw unwanted attention, no matter who might take an interest. Especially now that the Coronis Expanse has a warrior of the Golden Throne as its watchman. Is that me? A warrior of the Golden Throne as his watchman? I don't know if that's referring to me. Let's change the subject. Why not? The decision is yours, Sherry. You're telling me tales about your colorful past, Jay, but I feel not all these stories are true. Uh, did you know Theodora von Valencius, my predecessor? It is difficult not to be aware of the powers that be, especially ones like Lord Captain Theodora. But we never met personally, as the difference between our positions was far too great. Theodora was a mighty ruler, the center of her own universe. And I, a pathetic commoner, was nothing next to her. But you were kind to me, Sherin. And in my eyes, that puts you above your esteemed aunt. Or whoever she was to you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, you seem to forgive my... You must forgive my prying. But has this esteemed princess's heart been claimed by some lucky fellow? Oh, shit. That's a pickup line, I guess. You keep using words I don't understand, like calling me Shireen. Actually, that is interesting. I'd like the to ask about that. The language on Ifrit, my home world, is quite different from the one spoken in the Coronis Expanse. We bestow more than one meaning upon each word, allowing our wise men to fully express their sagacious thoughts and us lowly commoners our base passions and desires. Passions and desires, eh? Tell me more. Take Arji, for example. That is what I call every piece of scum and villain, because Arji means evil and foe and pathetic worm unworthy of consideration. Or take Ashmag. It means fool and little brother and blind man who stumbled and would fall into a pit without guidance. Shirin is... Shirin means friend and comrade and roommate in a battle formation, like we are. Okay. Fair. Uh... Are you lying to me? <laughs> Listen, Shirin... The giver of happiness and the dearest of my friends. I am who I am. A cold trader, a Caspalican agent, and your partner. We each have a past, and that past is sealed. I'm not prying into your soul, am I? Well, have pity on mine. It has already been gnawed at by the Aji. And if you don't like the sound of that, we'll just go our separate ways. Deal? Okay, calm down. You know that I wasn't... Uh, okay, I uh, shouldn't have said nothing. Cold trade, the illegal trade will come out of these... And the artifacts of Xena origin. Okay, thank you for sharing. All gonna... relationships are based on mutual trust. That goes for business too. Damn, should I ask her? Hey, uh, you, uh, you fucking? <laughs> or lucky lady, you mean? Oh, my heart has been coveted by proud men with hard eyes, gentle maidens with sensual voices, imperious lords, and fierce leaders of void brigands. Only rogue traders have not yet featured among Jai Hedari's intimate friends. Why do you ask, Shireen? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I, was just, I was just asking, you know, for a friend. Uh, Hedari. She says her last name is Hedari. I thought it was Ifrit, but maybe. Maybe that's her new name? Like to stay away from. Her old place? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> fuck. Perhaps I shall grant you the high honor of serving as my nightly delight. Jesus Christ, my guy. Just curious. I like to know every last detail about the members of my entourage. Uh, why are you avoiding answering, Mistress Hadari? 
I need to know who I must kill to rid myself of a rival, man or woman. Uh, I enjoy being with you. I would like us to spend more time together. Doesn't matter. Forget it. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just curious. I'm asking. Oh, Sherin. Then what reason do I have to tell you the truth? Every mystery one solved ceases to excite the interest of an inquiring mind. Oh, you teasing bitch. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Why are you avoiding answer? You are prying at the treasures of my soul, my little secrets. How else can I keep them safe from such a powerful robber as the rogue trader? I dare not refuse you. Bestowing a dazzling smile upon you, Jade demurs with fluttering noonish abashment with hints of her genuine amusement breaking through only rarely. Okay. Who would have to kill? I'm just kidding. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, you want to be my my sock puppet? I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> what am I saying? Uh, would you like to spend more time together? Oh, Sherim. With a few words, you have managed to make my heart flutter like a songbird caught in the snare of a skilled hunter. You enjoy being with me. Perhaps you even find me... amusing? Every girl dreams of hearing that she will make a fine toy and a worthy diversion. I don't know about that. <laughs> that seems a little broad. Uh, well, broad, get it? Lamau. Uh, Jay injects uh, just enough sarcasm into her voice for you to notice. Okay, it was okay. I didn't. I'm retarded. I didn't get that. And just enough playful irony uh, to <laughs> into the enticing curve of her smile. I do not see you as a toy. I just like you. Sure. I understand. I'm just having a little fun, Sherin. I can't possibly just say, oh, I like you too. Words as dry and dull as a voidsman's dinner. They are unworthy of us. Okay, fair. Continue. If you are not simply amusing yourself by oh, toying holy with shit. my feelings, then why not give it a try? Go on. Or wait, you haven't yet asked how I feel about being your romantic partner. Ask soon, Sherin. Hmm, am I kidding you this? I don't think I want to. I'll be real with you. I don't know if I'm gonna commit. Drop to one me, my dazzling one. Can I trust you to hold? Can I trust that you hold in your heart at least the smallest drops of regard for me? Ask meekly. <laughs> um, Jay, Dory, will you be my um uh, prom date? Uh, uh, look, I'm a simple man, and these flirt flirtatious overtures. It is very early days for me to be giving orders. Do not push your luck, Mistress Hedari. Fuck, okay, these are all really bad, <laughs> in my opinion. I can't, I don't, I, th none of these seem like to back off, you know? I can tell her, calm down, bitch. Or I can tell her, you know, I'm not here to play games, motherfucker. Or I can put my fingers together. You know how they do that thing where they go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, or I can just straight up simp, which ain't happening. I think I'm going to go with this one. I ain't here to play games. Can go to the Aji. <laughs> Say no more, Sherry. Okay. I'm inviting you to dinner some uh decent wine over some decent wine i'm sure we'll i can't talk today i'm sure we shall find a fertile topic of conversation i shall wait for you to treat me to a token of your infection my dazzling one uh what would you say to going to my chambers right now i have a pool for absolution Abl ablution ah oh, fuck i forgot that word incidentally uh take it to the bath Make her give me something or just have dinner. 
Dinner sounds nice. I have no doubt that you are a wonderful conversationalist, Sherin. I will make a note of your invitation and make sure to take you up on it when I next get hungry. Ho ho ho, okay. She's like, you're doing it on my time, motherfucker. All but right, if cool. the feelings in your soul have become a fire that is burning you up from within, then you may express them by bestowing a gift upon your humble servant. Okay, calm down, bitch. Who does that, dude? Like, immediately, just like... Hey, I think I like you. It was like, cool. Show me. Give me something. <laughs> Never mind. Get off my ship. <laughs> I'll see you later. Oh, I have no doubt you will. Oh, a little farewell wink. Very cool. Okay. So that's two down. Uh, Pascal, we learned about his dark past. And in her, we just got to flirt with. So very, uh, very different dynamic there. Very cool. I think next on the list is over here with uh, Adira. Which I'll be honest, Adira is always a fun time. Like for real, she's always fun to talk to and just try to parse out what the fuck she's talking about. So that'll be a fun one for next time, but I'm going to call it there. It has been the, you know, 30 minutes, you know, that's a typical time. I know these episodes kind of go a little longer, but if I can cut them off at a good point, you know, I will. And, uh, yeah, I feel like that's a good point today. Definitely Jay learned a hell of a lot more about her. Learned a hell about more about Pascal. Hopefully we can learn more about Adira and and everyone else associated with our, our retinue here. Definitely uh, Heinrichs on the list of people I want to talk to get to know because uh, I really haven't had the opportunity to do so. But um, yeah, next time we're going to be checking out Adira and having some fun conversations, I'm sure. I'll see you in the next one.